I have a few options for you guys. This is really tall and I'm short. Thanks. And I have a scary scene with blood. <laughs> and I have um, a not as scary scene, but there is blood. <laughs> uh, that one, this one's got blood. <laughs> This one's got probably the most blood of the... Mm. Oh, this one's kind of romance, I'm not sure if it is. It's the Halloween party scene with um, Cute Boy. So you guys want um, a lot of blood, minor blood, kind of blood, uh, funny with blood, or <laughs> <laughs> funny with blood, okay. <laughs> I think this might be the long one. <laughs> okay, um, this is from chapter 8, um, which is the uh, scene where um, it's not long after Ellie gets her powers back and uh, Will takes her to an abandoned warehouse to um, kind of destroy it and cause a lot of havoc and basically teach her that uh, she can kick a lot of butt. And she finds this out. It's a pretty cool scene. It's one of my favorites. One of my favorites to read and write. Will showed me to the door, but it was boarded up. He plucked the sheets off the plywood, he plucked the sheets of plywood off with no effort at all and tossed them aside. The interior of the warehouse was surprisingly clean. Junk had been moved to the side and there wasn't any broken glass lying around. Tires were stacked in a corner by a pile of rusting hubcaps and wooden crates. Moonlight streamed in through high, mostly intact windows. Steel columns stretched from the concrete floor to the ceiling. I've even cleaned it up for you, Will said, obviously trying to suppress laughter. Well, after that, I was sure it was directed at me. I glared at him. Why was it boarded up if you'd gotten in already? Did you nail the boards over the door when you left? I didn't come in through the door, he said, and pointed up. My gaze lifted to the windows. Nuh-uh. Once you figure out what you can really do, you won't be surprised at how I got in. That's why we're here. So you can murder me and steal marshmallow? I mumbled absently as I picked at the peeling paint on the door. He blinked, still what? Never mind. You are a very strange girl, he said, stepping close to me. His closeness alarmed me for a moment, and then I, m I felt my unease melt away. It was really odd, my reaction to his presence. Perhaps it was because he was the only one I knew in the world who had the power to protect me. That should have made anyone feel pretty safe, right? Perhaps it was his bond he said we shared. What are you doing, I asked, his, my eyes wide. His fingers traced the curve of my shoulder softly as his gaze fell. I gasped sharply. If he tried to kiss me, I slapped the crap out of him. Bond or no bond. He slipped my purse off my shoulder and tossed it. You won't need this. He turned and stepped away. I let out a long breath. You're weird, you know that? Way weirder than you think I am. He laughed. I believe you've told me that a few times. Do I need to be in the grim in order to fight or do those crazy acrobatics? No, he said. The only time you need to enter the grim is when a reaper is hiding there. When they're hiding, that's the only way we can see them. So what can I really do? If you can jump through a two-story window, then what can I do? You can do that too. You don't even need wings to do it either. I ignored a smart-ass remark, which made no sense to me at all. I unzipped my hoodie, shucked it off, and tossed it over by my purse. Wearing just my tank top, I folded my arms over my chest. Yeah, right. Show me something then. You can bring this whole building down. I huffed in disbelief. Show me. I'm not going to destroy the warehouse with us in it, he said. We'll need this place for a while, so I'll give you a little taste. He stepped farther away from me, his eyes locked on mine, and stood next to one of the steel columns. For a moment, I had to blink several times. It looked as if the air around him moved, like heat waves swaying just above the pavement on a hot day, only they radiated off his body. The green of his eyes seemed to intensify until they almost glowed, even though I knew that wasn't impossible. Then a blast hit me like a truck, knocking me flat on my back. I struggled back to my feet, gaping at Will in awe. I could see the energy rolling off him. I could feel it on my skin and lapping up my legs. With a quick swing of his torso, Will smashed his forearm into the column, and the steel gave with a piercing line until it bent at an angle, ripping almost fully free from the, be from the beam high above it. Dust blasted free and settled to the floor. I staggered back, tripping and nearly falling. I stared at him, fearful, confused, and completely stunned. Ha how? I could take it down if I wanted to, he said, relaxing his power, letting it wash away like the tide. You're stronger than me, Ellie. I need to prove it to you. Oh, God, was all I could say. You try it, he said. I know you remember how. I've seen you do it since you awakened. By summoning your power, you will have the strength to kill a reaper. 
they can do the same thing though, so you have to be cautious. And that's why you have the angel fire. If you come across severe, you may not know what he is until it's too late. The weaker ones seem almost human. The powerful ones don't even bother to hide what they are. They usually like to be compared to humans, but they'll shapeshift in order to take the form of a particular human in order to infiltrate. Do you have to touch my face again to trigger me in order to bring my power out, I asked. No, I don't think we'll have to do that again. He held out his arm and conjured his sword. The enormous silver blade glinted into being. Call your swords now. Why? I asked, uncertain of his motives. We're going to bring out your power so you will learn to do it on your own. I'm your soldier, but I'm not your crutch. But I, in a flash, he sliced his sword at my throat, but I instinctively ducked, shocked by my own quickness. Without consciously calling them, my swords appeared in my hand. Will swiped his blade down again, but I swung my swords up, catching Will's blow with a shing of metal against metal. He pushed down hard, but I held my position, refusing to let him overpower me, and the angel fire ignited on my blades. Will's foot suddenly connected with my chest and slammed me into the one, of, one of the columns behind me, my back crunching against steel. The wind rushed from my lungs, but Will was coming at me too fast for me to catch my breath. He swept away, swept again, and I rolled away. His blade clanged off the, common, off, the co off the column, and I looked back, eyes wide. Stop running, Will shouted. Fight me. You're going to kill me, I shrieked. Only if you let me. He leaped into the air and came down at me, his sword held high. He slashed, but the kopash caught his blade and deflected it away from my face. I swung my other sword and slashed. Will recoiled as the blade cut neatly down his cheek. His face snapped to the side and he groaned in pain. He looked back at me, his, eye, his green eyes brighter than I had ever seen them, and the gash on his cheek melted together again, leaving only a thin line of blood. The angel fire didn't harm him. Keep fighting and don't stop, he thundered. If you stop, you're dead. He vanished suddenly and reappeared behind me. I reeled around to face him, swinging one sword up, and it collided with his. I slashed the other sword at his belly, but he jumped back, swung around, and kicked my wrist. The kopash went flying. I gaped at it in fright, and when I looked back at Will, he had already lowered his sword and was reaching for me. He clamped his hand around my throat, threw my back against a column, and grabbed the wrist that held my remaining kopash. He had me pinned. I struggled against his grip, but he was just so, so strong. Let me go. My free hand clawed at his hand around my neck. I'm not releasing you, he said. You've lost. You've stopped fighting and took your eye off me. Please, please, Will. I gasped, my windpipe closing. Panic grabbed at me and my eyes swelled with tears. You're going to kill me. Then do something about it, he roared in my face. You have that strength. If you want me to let you go, then force you to. I screamed, half filled with fear and half with fury, and my power exploded. My hair whipping around my face so wildly I couldn't see. The column behind me crunched and the floor rolled and sank beneath my seat. <coughs> Will was blown away from me and landed sliding across the concrete floor. I bolted forward and my sword burst into flames as I swung it at Will's throat where he lay. I poised the tip at his jugular, my lungs heaving, my heart pounding, and my power swirling like a hurricane around me, swallowing me in diamond light. My eyes darkened as I stared well down. He put his hands up slowly. You lose, I said cruelly. My power receded and my body relaxed. I collected my fallen sword and willed them away. Will smiled and rose to his feet. I promptly punched him in the face hard enough to make him drop back to his knees. You're a bastard. I shrieked down at him, my voice cracking. He laughed and rubbed his jaw firmly. And you're frightening. He stood back up. I hit him again, making his head snap around. Why'd you scare me like that? As I swung the third time, he grabbed my wrist. That's enough hitting, he growled. You don't exactly hit like a girl. It's a lot of blood and fighting in this book, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Girl that kicks butt.